Hi everybody, uh, this is Mr. Beckstrom and today I want to take a look at an example from section 7.6. Uh, here we're going to do at the uh, letter C. This is the half angle formula for the sine of theta over 2. And it gives us in the problem that the sine of theta is equal to 1 over 6. That theta is between 0 and pi over 2, which puts it squarely in our first quadrant. And uh, this is what we want to find here. I went ahead and copied over the formula for the sine of an angle over 2. And it gives us this formula here. Now notice that um, if we take the, uh, since this angle is in the first quadrant, half of that angle will still be in the first quadrant, right? Because if you take any angle, if you think about this visually here, right? Uh, let me put a line here. If you're in the first quadrant, like here, if you take half of that angle there, you're still going to be here in the first quadrant. So uh, we're going to deal with a positive uh, value there, which means that we could ignore the minus and just look at the positive answer to this. So uh, we're just going to be having a positive answer. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, do this. The, the hardest part here is going to be to do the algebra part and simplify this. So um, the first things first, let's go ahead and see what we need. We need to find out what the cosine of the angle is. Well, there's a couple of different ways to do that. Given that we know what sine is, I can just use the Pythagorean theorem or the Pythagorean identity, sine squared uh, plus cosine squared is equal to 1. Or I can set up my triangle in the first quadrant. And uh, hopefully you all know by now, I like triangles more, so that's what I'm going to do. So, uh, And it lets me actually answer all of these questions a lot easier as well. So let's go ahead and I'm going to put my triangle here. Uh, my angle comes out from the origin. Uh, they give us the sine, which is opposite over hypotenuse, so the opposite side over the hypotenuse. This means that the other side is going to be 36 squared minus 1 squared, which is 35, and the square root of that, which we'll just leave that as the square root of 35. That's just using the Pythagorean theorem in order to find the last side. And then we can easily find any of the other six trig functions just using SOHCAHTOA. So for this one, we need to know the cosine of that angle, uh, angle alpha, right? So the angle of cosine of alpha would just be the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So I'm going to write it right here. The cosine of alpha is just equal to, this is going to be positive because we're in the first quadrant, uh, square root of 35 over 6. You write it better 6 there. All right. So let's uh, put in everything here, and then we'll go ahead and do the math to kind of simplify this. So remember, we're just looking at the positive version of this. So we're going to have 1 minus the cosine of alpha is square root of 35 over 6. And then this is all going to be divided by 2. And uh, the first thing I want to do is combine the top. So I can write 1 as 6 over 6. And then I can combine those. I'm going to do that in one step here. So that's going to be 6 minus the square root of 35 over 6. Once again, I just did two steps there and one. I made one into a 6 over 6, and then I subtracted the two fractions together. Give me that all over 2, like this. And coming down here. I can multiply by the reciprocal of the, of the denominator. So uh, instead of dividing by 2, I can multiply by 1 half. So that is going to give me 6 minus the square root of 35 all over 12. Um, and then if you notice, uh, 12 is the um, the product of 
a perfect square. So uh, 4 is a perfect square. So I can actually rewrite it like this. Um, the square root of 6 minus square root of 35 like this all over the square root of 4 times the square root of 3, right? Just like this, uh, because we can take the top and the bottom separately, and then I can divide the bottom up like this, and the square root of 4 is just 2. So this is going to be um, 2 square root of 3 all over uh, 6 minus the square root of 35 like this. And then finally, um, we can combine these two square roots under 1 again, which is just going to leave us that 1 half out front because the 2 stays on the bottom. And we can, uh, that's just a 1 assume there. And it's going to look like this just to kind of put it in the simplest form here. And this is the answer they had in my math lab, but this is how they got it all over 3. All right. Um, if you had any, if you have any questions, uh, let me know. You know, you can get here a little bit easier from here. If you just kind of see this, you can say, oh yeah, 12 is 4 times 3. So I can pull out a 2 and leave a 3 on the bottom, but the 2 has to stay on the bottom. So I just pull out the 2 and then just put a 1 on the top there. And you can actually just jump right from here all the way over to there. If you kind of get good at seeing that, you don't have to go through all these little step processes. But I, I wanted to show you how to do it in case, uh, in case you needed that. All right, guys. I hope you all have a great rest of your week. All right, thanks.